Hello, welcome to Recapping with Delora and Ashley. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Recapping Podcast. Also, comment, rate, and subscribe on your favorite podcast platform. We're on all the things. We would love to hear your ratings of the movies and shows we review. Email us your audio file to recappingpodcast at gmail.com and we will play it during the show. Or DM us on Instagram and we will post and read it on air. Thank you guys so much for listening. Thank you. Hey, Delora, girl, new week. What's going on? I need to cool it down, hit it. Oh, I forgot to mention this. Um, so happy Tuesday, everyone. I changed my Twitter handle to a heated alien superstar. <laughs> As you guys can see, the love for Beyonce continues to spill and probably will for a while. For a while. Multiple episodes. So if we break out randomly in song, you know why. Don't judge us. Just rock with us, okay? Today's recap, because y'all know what we do on Tuesdays, is, as I mentioned last week, Netflix's highest costing film to date. And that is The Gray Man. A little over two hour runtime. $200 million. Yeesh. Can I get $200 million, please? Can I just hold like 10% of that? I'll take 10. I'll take 20. <laughs> million easy girl the fact that we love entertainment but these budgets just be on another level is um an interesting conundrum i guess <laughs> this film was released in theaters on july 15th and dropped on netflix on july 22nd and despite some articles throwing shade saying it only stayed at number one for eight days was it worth the money um it is still going strong in netflix's top yes, 10 so is. currently i believe number three quick summary when the CIA's top asset uncovers agency secrets, he triggers a global hunt by assassins set loose by his ex-colleague. Directors, the Russo brothers, no big deal. You know, they just did some things for Marvel that kind of blew our minds, but no biggie. Epic. Epic. This film is the first in a book series by Mark Greeny. There are actually 12 books in this series. So I know Netflix is hoping to expand this, but I don't know if y'all got 12 coming. Uh, Girl. That's a long time. That's Girl. a lot of movies. So we'll see what happens. But cast, all-star, Ryan Gosling as Cortland Gentry, a.k.a. Sierra Six. Chris Evans, our favorite Chris, as... <sighs> Lloyd Hansen. Who did I say? I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Anna de Armas, who her wardrobe I loved in this film. She's so beautiful. She is. Danny Miranda. Reggae Jean Page as Denny Carmichael. Billy Bob Thornton as Donald Fitzroy. Jessica Henwick as Suzanne Brewer. Julia Butters as Claire Fitzroy. And Alfrey Woodard as Margaret Cahill Legend. reviews yes reviews Rotten Tomatoes 46% critic score ouch but 91% audience score who where 89% of Google users also fuck with this film Dolores so what How? is your grade clearly it's not gonna be 89 or 91 what's your grade for the gray man I didn't mean to show my card so soon but uh <laughs> giving it's giving c knock it on c minus the plot was thin mm. <laughs> and i don't know what we were doing i i don't and we'll elaborate but what i will say is this film gave me john wick met man on fire met born identity oh men on fire love that reference yeah we're in the same ballpark i gave it a strong c um <laughs> part of it is because i stress watched this film the first time through <laughs> i paused this movie so many times it was it i will say this before spoiler alert 
this is like the most masculine thing I think we've watched so far. Maybe. Uh, it was not uh, for me. I was not the I was not the key demographic. For this I don't know movie. if it's the most masculine or if it's the most uh what's a good word like it's obviously action right but I want to say more so like almost sanitized like there's not yeah. you can't you're not getting a lot of joy and a lot of the projects or that we or Deep thought, thought. <laughs> and a lot of the projects we do are one or both <laughs> so that may be why but my stress watch definitely took away from my enjoyment the first time because I felt like Ryan was in danger almost every moment of this film so I just couldn't relax but but my second watch I was able to pick up on more of the humor and while I definitely picked up the humor yeah while to some of your references it definitely did not live up to the big spy names like Bond and Bourne Correct. Okay, the yeah. star power with that little touch of heart because we did get just a little bit, just a little bit, kept me entertained enough. It was visually stunning, though. I will give you, I will give them that. It was. We went on stunning. a whole international tour, but the fight, and we'll ex- we'll elaborate. But I'll elaborate once we get into discussion. I'll do that. All right, guys. Spoiler alert. Let's get into the good. Good. When we meet Six, a.k.a. Cortland Gentry, he's being, I guess one could say, recruited. He's in Florida State Prison in the early aughts for murder and basically told he can either join the CIA to kill people indefinitely or he can stay in prison for another couple decades before he's eligible for probation. What do you think of that deal, Delora? And do you think the CIA actually recruits prisoners? Ooh, I I think it just depends. I mean, we've seen this story time and time again in movies and films, especially when it comes to like spy um, IT type stuff, right? Like hackers and things like that. But I don't know. I mean, I guess I would rather fight for the CIA. <laughs> but then again, it's like, but what's what are you not telling me, right? And it's also the indefinitely part. I mean, this is sl- yeah. one to say slavery. Ooh, true. And you're getting people at their most vulnerable. It's like I can stay locked away in prison or you'll let me out, but I have to do your bidding and murder people. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What a trade off, right? So I guess my thoughts were it was, uh, a hell of a conundrum to get us going because we did not yet know what he was actually in prison, who he murdered, what the circumstances Very were, true. any yes. of that. So yes. I hope the CIA doesn't recruit prisoners, but I digress. Let's move forward. We jump an asset eight- is an asset, Ashley. No, we jump, <laughs> we jump 18 years later, and six is the pro of pros. He is sent on an assignment in Bangkok to take out a supposed baddie threatening national security. But when he refuses to kill a kid who is referred to as collateral to complete the mission and has to take out the target face to face, he's told the unsettling news that his target is also in the CIA and he is Sierra four before he dies sierra four passes along a necklace to six with an encrypted drive containing information on denny carmichael the cia agent who was running the op and apparently has things to hide this is one of my favorite fight sequences in the film yes because it was visually interesting but it was also like what would you do if you're fighting in the midst of like fireworks going off (laughs) But the reds and the powders and the um, fireworks, visually, it was it was amazing. I enjoyed that. And it's almost like it added to, you know, that feeling you get when the music has that crescendo yes. during action scenes. It added to that, like, Absolutely. intensity of the moment. So I really enjoyed that fight scene. Six leaves his op partner, Danny, in the dark, but calls his old retired recruiter, Fitzroy, for help. When they talk and Fitz tells Six that they never got that far in terms of an exit strategy for him to leave the CIA, I was quite annoyed. But Six took it in stride saying, well, it beat prison, right? So again, how did you feel at this juncture? We already talked about 
him being forced to choose between prison or life and servitude to the CIA. Now he's being told they never, they really never did have an exit plan for him and his life is on the line. Do you, would you feel like Fitz put you in an impossible situation or would you feel like, well, he gave me a new lease on life? Um, I would feel some kind of way after this many years in the game, right? Cause it was like, oh, so you expected me to just die. Got it. Basically. And all the other Sierras. Yep not not excited about the lack of vision (laughs) (laughs) but but again it also makes you come off as disposable because again they didn't take the time to figure out after all your years of service being our top guy what's gonna happen when you get old and when you can't outrun or fight or exert yourself or what have you absolutely Despite being warned of his sociopathic methods, Denny enlists CIA reject, private contractor, and personal friend Lloyd Hansen to take out six and recover that encrypted drive. Delora, what'd you think about two of your faves, your booze, Chris Evans and Reggae Jean Page playing baddies in this film? It took it took a moment of adjustment. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. When it comes to Chris Evans, that mustache was a character in itself, right? (laughs) It was like he exuded douchiness. I agree. But when it came to reggae, reggae wasn't doing it for me in this role Mm. at all. In in terms of like, he kind of came off kind of corny. I wasn't really believing him as this bad guy now is he suave yes but i don't know i wasn't in love with his acting in this film Mm. i agree on the chris front that chris played bad annoyingly well i almost forgot that it was him who i was watching because he really goes so deep into this crazy asshole psycho character yeah and so our and he's humorous still. Like he didn't lose the humor. It was just when darker. I tell you, he had the funniest parts for me, for sure. But Reggae Jean, I, I love the glasses. I'm not gonna lie, but I love a man in glasses. That's the well, other thing. I mean, I do too. Was he attractive? Yes, but his character is just I I I didn't connect him being a baddie you know what i mean but i think what the reason why i believe it is because he's a corporate baddie he's not about to get his hands dirty Mm. and go out in the field he's a bitch a little bit he comes off like a snake right like he couldn't handle the heat yeah he got turned up yeah he's gonna run and hide behind the the machines and we'll even hear more about that and expand more on that and that he is not running this show for himself he is basically a lapdog for a higher figure with in the CIA so I can totally see him being this little weasel this little bitch (laughs) who's just playing his little role and doing what he has to do to try to climb the corporate ladder within the CIA Mm. exactly but tries to play six as if he is lesser than him speaking of that hierarchy of life like as if the Sierra folks are just these little throwaway people yes interesting So not having any intel on six, because the Sierras, their files, they don't even have files. That's how deep they are in terms of doing what they need to do to keep their identities and keep themselves safe and out of Mm -hmm. of the way. Denny kidnaps Fitz's niece, Claire, as blackmail to press him for info. And it works. Fitz places the order with the guys traveling with six to kill him. Did not work out for them, though. One of the craziest scenes in this film is when Six managed to kill a guy mid-air who took the last parachute. I literally put in my nose, Ashley. I was like, this plane scene is ridiculous. (laughs) I have never seen anything like it in my entire life. I mean, the plane was also crumbling apart. Like, I just... And he's literally free-falling... Don't you, people. don't you love how all Ryan needed in this film at six was a quick nap and a quick bite to eat and he was always good my sister called me and she was like 
So he never breaks a sweat. <laughs> <laughs> Rarely, barely out of breath. Really? After you're all that, good. You're, After you're all that, good. Okay, got it. Do you think that Fitz assumed he would survive this attack, though? I think Fitz was not surprised that he survived this attack. I, I agree. He knew what he was doing when he called the hit on his head, but he wasn't surprised to get that call. I don't think he was either, but it was like, so F those other guys who <laughs> were on the plane. <laughs> The ones that he brought yeah. to save six. Exactly. <laughs> like, y'all, let me go ahead and throw out this hit. Y'all won't survive this, but, you know, God bless. <laughs> if I have to choose between y'all and my surrogate son, it's my surrogate son every time. So we flash back, and I know you love a flashback, and I do too, to two yes. years prior. And we learned that Six spent time bonding with Fitz's niece, Claire, as her bodyguard while Fitz was away on a mission because his address was leaked. Fitz became her guardian after his brother died and she has a pacemaker due to a heart condition. So based on this time spent together, we really come to realize that this is very personal for Six as well. Yes, absolutely. Because Claire, as Claire mentioned in the flashback, she, when she was talking about the fact that Fitz was the only family she had, as Six said, he's the closest thing to family I had too. And she's like, I guess that kind of makes us family. It's the, we don't do, chew gum in this house for me. <laughs> <laughs> I also love when she came out, she was like, um, is everything okay? She's literally looking at a man laying on the floor of the house, but um, yes. you good? Everything good? You know, just another Thursday. Oh, okay. My deal is, do you think she knew what her uncle did for a living before that point? I'm not sure if she knew, but she damn sure didn't seem that surprised. Exactly. That's where I was like, does she know? Also wanted to ask you, do you think that the leak of Fitz's address was intentional by somebody within the CIA? Because after everything that's going on in this film... My second watch, I started thinking, I think he was set up. I think it, this may even been when Denny was a part of the organization now and was trying to kind of push him out, mm -hmm. that there were things that were going on behind the scenes to get rid of him. That's a great question because my initial understanding was I thought it was an intentional. I, I did, but I didn't know who, who did it. Yeah, it seems like there's a lot of mechanisms at work that are supposed to be left for us to figure out in future films. But we can still address it a little bit, obviously, in this recap. So Lloyd puts out a multi-million dollar international hit on six, resulting in even a contact for passports, flipping on him in Vienna and trapping him in his house. How six did not break anything when he fell down a trap door. That part. Movie well, magic. Is so to the conversation of him and claire it was giving me man on fire and then when lloyd Absolutely. took the hit on him i was like this is john wick like oh my gosh everybody is coming this is mainly the second one because the first one obviously was him killing everybody who killed his dog um <laughs> but the second john wick was him being on the run because he did the big no-no killing somebody in a safe space mm. yeah i told you i didn't make it past john with one not that i don't like keanu i love keanu so i much. just i just didn't stick with it so maybe maybe at some point i'll go back down the john wick path but anyway six's reputation is no lie because he manages to survive with a big help from danny who doesn't just fall for the okie doke from denny carmichael after he gets her suspended I, that interaction between the two of them and again to the point of this is why to me he's a little weasel because he yes. says all these things but he's he will not get his hands dirty and not get in the thick of things yep i really <laughs> what she tell him you're in my personal space yes and the fact that he was like oh they don't they usually don't come this attractive is she not a person but was he trying to lay it on her at the same time? I don't think so. He seems uh, quite asexual to be so handsome. You mean in real life or in this role? In this role. 
In real life, he exudes sex appeal. In this role, he seems quite I was asexual. like, he wouldn't be the Duke of Hastings if he No. Did. I'm not talking about Reggae Jean. I'm talking about Denny. They even named him Denny. I only, yeah, no. Sorry if there's any Denny's listening to this. <laughs> Danny ends up saving six but throws him in the trunk because she has questions, right? What do you think of the chemistry between Anna and Ryan as partners in this movie? I didn't think there was any. Ooh. <laughs> Where, did you feel like there was an attraction there? Not an attraction, just more of that buddy kind of back oh. and forth. That's what I mean by chemistry. Oh, I don't know if I really even see that either because I feel like, I, I feel like they were fine. It wasn't anything that was notable. I think he was giving more than her, so that therefore it's kind of hard for me to <laughs> really say. Well, I think she was she was she was more serious, right? Not that Six didn't take his job seriously, but it really was a job for her. Whereas for him, he had it was to his do life. This. He had right. to do this. He has no other option or no other choice. So and if you can't find the humor exactly. in what you do every day. Yeah. Exactly. But the fact that they had her saving him multiple times, even though he's this yes. biggest, baddest of them all, I loved that. Yeah. Uh, and I'm thinking about that one scene in particular. She was like, you're supposed to have the gun loaded. He was like, why would I throw a loaded gun? No one throws a loaded gun. <laughs> Six and Danny head to another retired CIA agent, Margaret Cahill's, in Prague to retrieve the info on the drive Six sent to her. Turns out Denny and his buddy Lloyd were involved in unsanctioned assassinations, torture, and bombings. They mentioned an old man multiple times in the film and alluded to Denny doing the bidding for a higher power within the CIA, which I mentioned just a few minutes ago. I personally made the guess that I think it's the president but I haven't read the books, so I'm just speculating. Who do you think he may be working for, as the old man mentioned? Huh, that's a great question. I, I genuinely don't know. <laughs> I really don't, because to your point, uh, the president is a sound choice, considering the CIA is supposed to work on our behalf for the nation's security, right? But I don't know. That's a great question. Well, again, if this gets greenlit for a second film, we might I think find out. The second film is greenlit, though. I, I, well, they said it's in the works, so who knows if it's been greenlit? And the way these streamers are knocking down projects, I was about to say, but that girl studios, just got canceled after they paid ninety million dollars for it. So you never know what's about to happen. Done. Uh huh. You never know what's gonna happen. Atrocious. I hope yep. that's one of those projects that fan outrage saves. But we'll see. It doesn't make any sense. Unless they're going in a different direction. Did I send you, after Comic-Con, did I send you that tweet where it's like <laughs> DC versus um, Marvel and it's like a person and you have like this beautiful picture for Marvel and then like this <laughs> sketch for DC. Like Marvel, we, we, we gush about them all the time. They have their stuff together compared to dc because they need to get their life together they do they just need a ringleader i feel like they just need a really good ringleader with a vision Soul vision yes that's what they're lacking the most there have been some great dc projects my, my yes. first love into you know the whole superhero world is split because i loved x-men i loved storm yes. but i also loved batman growing up so it was yes. split loyalty like i never yep. had a loyalty just to marvel or anything but Same. The vision of Marvel Studios is is epic right now. So Absolutely. Lloyd tortures Fitz to get the info on Six's whereabouts. Margaret, who's dying of cancer, sacrifices herself to provide an escape. And it's a full out shit show in the streets of Prague as multiple teams try to take Six out. Turned, you can talk about another action film, turned into a scene straight out of Fast and the Furious film franchise <laughs> as far as i'm concerned i was like why does the black woman have to sacrifice herself though but that's me thinking real deep well one thing i want to talk about once we reach our finale is both the leaders both fitz and margaret and the things that they seemingly did to show to me that they cared more about Sierra Six and more about them as human beings mm -hmm. than one might have thought previously. Mm -hmm. 
Unfortunately, a lone wolf working for Lloyd bests Danny and Six and grabs the drive at a hospital they went to looking for Claire's location via her pacemaker. In a moment between the two, we find out that it was murder of his own father that put Six in prison, but he was protecting his brother. Yep. In a flashback earlier, we saw his father torturing Six as a child by burning him with a cigarette lighter. What did you think about this revelation? Well, it really put things in perspective in terms of how you see Six. Because again, we were first introduced to him in chains, given this once in a lifetime offer, right? And to know that he actually had a heart, you know, that really, I, I appreciated this uh, revelation about him. It, it made me feel more comfortable about his relationship with Claire and even his relationship with Fitzroy as well. You know what I mean? It's like he he is very much capable and he's very much human because he did what he did out of, out of love. I mean, obviously this is in context of this film. I do not believe in murder, (laughs) but you know, self-defense is a real thing. So it was very endearing to me, but it was also tragic. It added another layer of tragedy to me because I just thought about the fact that he was like 15 when he yes. ha- when he killed his father to protect his brother and was sent to prison. And it seemed like, I guess, nobody had his back because he said, right. you know, I thought I did the noble thing. Everybody else disagreed and thought I should go to prison. So right. when your family turned their back on you, all of that, and then now you're forced into a life of murdering people yeah. for a living, something that was probably totally out of your character, something you never wanted to do. It was, That was tragic to me. Yeah, that's a great point. But it's not that he didn't excel at it. I guess at the end of the day, as sad as it is, can we talk about these suits for just a second? That's another <laughs> thing that I loved about this movie. These suits, even the lone wolf who comes to the hospital, these tailored, beautiful suits... Yeah, just definitely added that level of like suave spy that Mm -hmm. bond element to me that I just really enjoyed because again he's supposed to be this criminal Sierra is supposed to be this criminal program but they look damn good they really did I I would say my favorite suit is the first the first one the the red one yes and and Anna's that night I love too yes I did too I did too. And then all of them wore suits to the red carpet, which made so much more sense to me after watching it. Got it. Okay. Loved it. Anyway, I digress. The lone wolf takes the drive back to Lloyd in Croatia now, because again, we didn't been all over the map, but Danny and six are right behind him. And we get our grand fighting finale to sum it up. Fitz dies. (laughs) <laughs> and Suzanne, the CIA agent who's been watching Lloyd's operation in horror, comes out on top when she puts a final bullet in Lloyd, pins all the shenanigans on him, captures Six, and keeps Danny quiet about the drive that Danny then destroys. Side note, I personally hate when our hero, who has survived it all, comes up against the top bad guy in the film. And it's even a remotely close fight, Delora. This man has taken out every person who he's coming up against in this film. And yet Lloyd really gets in some licks. Yeah, because Lloyd is supposed to be that dude too. You know what I mean? Um, when he started- Six was just tired. That's <laughs> like, He was just tired. But Lloyd came out with that freaking knife. I wanted to scream at the television when he started stabbing him. I'm like, no! should have known he wasn't gonna fight fair but uh, yes yes and i all i have in my notes at this part is ego like it was just all about who dick is swinging <laughs> you know what i mean like goodness gracious but that's a fair point too even on six's side because six could have let danny take him out with that shot she was a sharpshooter from a distance who had him in her sights and she could have shot and killed him right then and there. But she said, nah, come get Claire. I got this. It's just another Thursday. 
Yeah. So that's a fair point. It definitely was a dick swinging contest in that moment. But it just, even in Colombiana, I thought this, like, it, there's been so many movies like this yes. where I'm like, why is it the one top dog suddenly Big can bad. give our heroine or our hero a run for their money? Like, I get it, Lloyd was crazy, but Lloyd yeah. was a reject from the CIA. He ain't got what it takes to stand toe to toe with Six. Te well, technically, the only reason why he was kicked out is because he was so menacing with his aunt. Unscrupulous. Yes. I don't think he would be able to hold a candle. I'm just saying. Like, I know, obviously, even before Suzanne shot Lloyd, Six had the upper hand and Six was going to end up killing him, right? It was it was inevitable. So in that case, why do you think Suzanne still shot and killed Lloyd just for the satisfaction of the moment? It was giving disgruntled female employee because <laughs> <laughs> this whole film Suzanne has been told what to do and forced to be in situations that she has not wanted to be in and Lloyd was hella disrespectful I mean everybody was disrespectful but Lloyd was unhinged when interacting with her so yeah and something we're gonna find out because Suzanne inevitably only think she came out on top as we're wrapping up this film and we get uh, a taste of the dynamics between her denny and lloyd they all went to harvard together yep right so it adds a layer to suzanne's frustration and that she's thinking oh these two yep men think that they're running the show we graduated in the same class from the same place y'all not better than me period but again men ego ambition they just treat her like crap. But do you think that justifies Suzanne's actions in the way that she tries to go about the ending of this film where basically she's covering her own ass. She wants to hold six hostage as well as Claire. They have thrown Claire into yes. some house in Virginia. Um, No, but I also feel like she probably didn't think out a better solution, frankly. Because like for her, in some ways, I feel like having her thumb on Six and Claire is her way of having some power. You know what I mean? Oh, absolutely about Stroking power. Her ego, you know? And so, yeah, it was a poor, I think it was ultimately a poor choice, but I feel like she probably did that because she didn't think she had any other choice and she wanted to maintain her quote unquote upper hand. So in that case, speaking of, Lloyd who was considered to be this unscrupulous person Denny and Suzanne one could say all three are kind of the bad guys of the film do you feel like any were worse than the others or do you think that they all had equal measures of you know morally compromised decisions it was just that Lloyd's was more front and center possibly than the other two because they got the hide behind their their desks for me, I think Lloyd and Carmichael were more hand in hand than Suzanne. And I say that because um, Carmichael was covering up some stuff. That's why he wanted that freaking drive and he was willing to kill any, any and everyone in that freaking Sahara program for that sake. And obviously Lloyd was just completely unhinged and physically brought a lot of harm to people as well. But, but Suzanne mm -hmm. also wanted to destroy that drive. She also has something True. to do with these antics and with the old man. True. I don't know. You know, for the longest time, I did think Billy Bob's character was the old man. <laughs> that would have been a, a twist. twist. Yeah. That would so have been an interesting I, twist, actually. Yeah. And so that's why I was like, you know, because he's the oldest and I know he's been playing that game for years. So, you know, in my mind while watching it, I was like, oh my goodness you know of course he pretends to be on six side because he's done him a favor but at the end of the day the republic is the republic to quote papa pope you know what i mean mm. <laughs> but i was wrong <laughs> i'm glad that fitz was a good guy and speaking of what i wanted to talk about earlier in terms of margaret and fitz they both sacrifice themselves to help to keep sick safe to a certain extent obviously Fitz got more compromised with his niece being mm -hmm. taken and held hostage but do you think inevitably even though one could say it's, it's hard to digest 
taking prisoners and putting them into this situation? Do you think that they really cared about and believed in these people that they recruited for this program? I think so. I really, I really do think so because to your point, the sacrifices that they have made, I mean, Margaret was underground. Like you couldn't get in contact with her, but once six did, she was open and um, willing to help, obviously, you know, in the ultimate way, but even before then, it just makes sense, you know, based off of the story, based off how this film had them set up, it was like, maybe they were the people who started the program and they knew what the true intent was, but because of corruption with the newer generation and what have you, it has, you know, gone off the rails. So they were willing to do what they, you know, did because they saw the value in people like six. Mm. So to wrap up this first gray man installment, surprise, surprise, six escapes the hospital that he As was he should have. taken to and rescues Claire from CIA custody. So what do you think, or do you think this is another process, uh, aspect of people not thinking things through? What what were they going to do with Claire? Hold her hostage for the rest of her life? I don't know, man. But what is he going to do? Be on a run with a girl with a heart issue? Like, that's my only problem. <laughs> I'm like, are you going to be able to live a life? I think that he would be able to figure it out for sure. But these mm-hmm. half-baked ideas throughout this film annoyed me. Like, does nobody, is everybody just flying by the seat of their pants? That's this whole movie? Like. <laughs> it did it, like. it did it did so my last question was going to be are you down for a second installment and what are your final thoughts <laughs> am i down for a second installment sure if i have time <laughs> ryan doesn't do it for me ryan goslin that is and you killed off my main boo and the other boo ain't really doing he's it like spicing it, it up to. he ain't doing it like he used to you know what i mean and so, <laughs> maybe they'll bring in another cutie for you Delora <laughs> the motivation is very low for me right now um final thoughts again a lot of action visually beautiful well done obviously with all the stunts and uh again that airplane scene was ridiculous okay <laughs> um but I just felt like the story was just really thin for me like I needed more twist turns I needed something to chew on I was you know what I mean I'm curious to see how the books because that's something I did not go do was to see what was changed or what was different Mm -hmm. if anything Mm -hmm. between the books and between the movie because I'm just curious if things were a little bit more flushed out Mm. and and where this is gonna lead again first first in a 12 book series so there may be a lot of meat that comes later oh, on it's giving me um was that jack reader vibes or am i saying that wrong jack reacher reacher yes thank you i'm just i'm i'm really curious to see if we will even see a second installment but to your point it's not something i'm gonna run and watch but i would give a second one a watch especially if there, like I said, is more meat and things are a little bit more fleshed out. And, yes. um, you know, there's, let's say, more development with Six in terms of his relationships with other people. Because that's something, too, he's so stoic still in this. I mean, we know he cares about Claire, yes. but we haven't really gotten to unpack a lot from him yet. You know, that's something I loved about Bourne. We found out quite a bit about Bourne. He was very layered. Yeah, he didn't have his memory, but over time, you learn more and more and more. So maybe we'll get that from this series. I couldn't tell you, but I'm glad I I got a chance to watch it twice because my second watch was definitely more enjoyable once I stopped pausing it every five minutes. So you really get caught up, huh? Man, some of these movies just be stressed. Some of these movies and shows be just stressing me out. I think I told you recently that action has just kind of fallen down my list of favorite genres. Yeah. Just because there's a lot going on in the world and in life. And so (laughs) I prefer levity in my entertainment. 
I get that. And so if you stressing me, I may end up turning it off and coming back to it. I may have to fast forward. Because le- for instance, in this film, the fight scene between Lloyd and Six, I fast forwarded through the first watch. I didn't even watch it. I was like, let me you just see nervous? him make it. Yeah, I didn't want to see. I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to see it. Wow. I know. Stress me out. So we'll see what happens if they get the green light for another film, Delora. And that's all we have for the recap today, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you got a chance to watch the film. Let us know your thoughts if you have any about this particular film. And if you are excited for a continuation in this series. Delora, it is time for Hidden Gems, girl. What you got to suggest to the people this week? I think we should start with the one that we have in common. Okay. Oh, yeah. We do have another one in common again this week. <laughs> Netflix new series, Uncoupled, starring Neil Patrick Harris. It follows a man who has who his life turned upside down after his partner walks out on him after 17 years. Now, I will say, still have two more episodes, but I am really enjoying this. Because we have Gina, <laughs> Tisha Campbell in it. We have the ultimate um, showrunner extraordinaire, Darren Starr, who is behind our phase, Sex in the City, as well as Younger. Mm-hmm. And this is filling that void for me. And it has been such a joy watching um, this Neil Patrick Harris trying to navigate life and having real representation on the screen when it comes to you know our lgbtqia brothers and sisters and non-binary people so what are your thoughts on this yeah I, this was one i had on my list like again i've been doing more of that lately like i just getting lazy <laughs> and i just want to be reminded of things that i see and i'm like oh that looks cool yeah obviously to your point the darren star obviously seeing no patrick harris in a role that you know he really gets to live his best life is what i was thinking absolutely um, in it but i have to be honest with you i first of all i binged it i watched it all in one sitting oh wow <laughs> i i'm gonna need for season two, I'm going to need these characters to be flushed out a little bit more. Okay. There's something about this first season that as as much as it was like brutal to see, you know, the premise and all this stuff playing out, it still felt a little bit impersonal to me. Maybe I'm just so used to having such a long life with the Sex and the City characters and even with the younger characters. Yeah. Like this first season, I was like, I don't feel like I'm getting enough emotional depth from really anybody except like Marsha Gay Harden. Yeah. And she Al- delivers. And Gina. Yeah. AKA Tisha. I'm still here. That's a deep cut. But yeah, I was just like, you know, I enjoyed it, but it feels very surface. This first season feels surface. I need to dig deeper. I still have two more episodes, but I have been really enjoying it. So first hand gem, second hand gem. Okay. Another novel, you guys. So here's the deal. You are in your novel bag, baby. Girl, I am knocking them down. (laughs) (laughs) I was sick this weekend, you guys. And it was rough. It was so rough. I was literally in bed all day Saturday and all day Sunday. Mm. And I had this wonderful wonderful novel called The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. It is a very popular book apparently on TikTok. It came out February 21st, 2021, which means that it's fairly new. It's about a young woman who agrees to a fake date, um, a colleague, and bring him to her sister's wedding. And I really love Aaron Blackford. <laughs> it's the typical trope of, you know, there. so there's two main tropes. The first, uh, enemies to lovers. The second, fake dating. And then the third, grumpy versus sunshine. So you have that theme. The only thing that I regret about this book is that I read it so close after the love hypothesis <laughs> like, mm-hmm. because both guys are tall brooding dark-haired men um but 
I genuinely love the guys in their own separate ways. And Aaron is actually my favorite because the interactions mean so much once you get to the bat, once you get to the end of the story. And I say that because I've listened to this book three times now. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> because once I made it through the first time, I was like, oh, there's something that happened. And so I'm like, I had to listen to it again because I wanted to pick up the clues that I missed the first time. And then I'm listening to the third time because this is my self-care. Um, I promise I'm not insane, but I've been sick, you guys, and stressed out at work. So hear me out. According to Deadline, uh, DC BF Pictures is developing the book into a film. This is the same um, writer, Peter Hitchings. He adapted The Hating Game, which was a hidden gem that was a novel turned into a book. I never read that novel, but the book was super, or I never read the novel, but the movie was super cute. Mm -hmm. Um, So this one would be an absolute adorable adorable movie because it is a little bit long but all their interactions really do add up because it's a slow burn in terms in to their romance and a lot of material for a film so that's my second hand gem all right ashley how about you all right so outside of uncoupled i have two this week i have surface on apple tv plus another one i had on my list my girl goo goo Batha Raw is an actress that I Love watch her. pretty much no matter the project. Sounds and right. Fast um, is amazing. I'm three episodes in and I'm sticking with it. It's a bit of a thriller about a woman who has lost her memory in an accident and is trying to figure out who she is, who she can really trust, and what happened to her. So, you know, if you like thrillers, if you want to see kind of some... I don't want to call it a who done it, but definitely going down the path of trying to figure out some mysteries. This might be a new good series for you to check out. So again, surface on Apple TV plus my last hidden gem. Everything's trash on free form. This is a fun new series. <laughs> <Started> that one <laughs> starring Phoebe Robinson as a successful podcaster. Woo woo who is navigating her career, dating, and helping her brother run for public office. This is one that me and Delora almost caught at the film festival at Essence yeah. Fest. Like, I think we showed up, like, right after it was done. We saw the ending. And we have a hat and a, and a t-shirt, I think. One, a yes. t-shirt from Grownish, a hat from Everything's Trash. So yeah. they definitely were pairing them together. And I think it's a good, I think it's a good Wednesday lineup for them because it airs Wednesdays, five episodes out currently. You guys, be sure to check it out. So those are our hidden gems for this week, guys. Thank you so much for sticking with us. We will be back, as always, with new headlines and hot topics to talk shit about on Thursday. So we look forward to seeing you guys then. We gonna fuck up the night. Da-da. All right, Beyonce is on repeat. Bye! <laughs>